Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center. Welcome to Knife AQ number 35, the knife series where I answer all your questions whether my voice is starting to crack or not. Let's get into it. All right, let's get into it. <laughs> All right, everyone, thanks for submitting your questions in the comments section of these videos. Uh, we've been having fun. Well, I always have fun anyway, combing through them and, uh, and coming up with some fun answers. If you want a chance for one of your questions to be featured, as always, just leave them in the comments section below. And now we're going to get into our first question this week, which is from Zeke Ramirez says, hey DCA, I've always liked the concept of overbuilt knives like the Hinderer XM18, but really have the ability, uh, but really don't have the ability to spend 425 bucks on one. Are there any alternatives you recommend with the titanium frame lock, great steel and sub 250 bucks? Sure, um, if, you, if what you're primarily looking for is just another good hinderer design under that price point uh, with the premium materials. Uh, there's a really nice one here, uh, fairly new from Viper. It's the Storm. It comes in about 215. You've got an M390 blade, uh, about three and a or three and an eighth of an inch. Uh, so this is kind of the size of like the, uh, the three inch XM18s rather than like the three and a half inch ones. Although it's uh, styling wise, it's a little closer maybe to the Eclipse models, but you've got titanium with G10 overlays, essentially. I'm, I'm still going to call this a frame lock because the G10 is kind of bolted to the outside. It's not a structural piece of the handle, but you've got those ball bearings and you've got uh, thumb studs here. Why do I keep forgetting what thumb studs are called lately? You're all thumbs today. <laughs> let's well, let's find out. Eh, doesn't work so well with the lighter flick, but really, really solid folder. Um, if you're looking for something more like the uh, the standard uh, three and a half inch XM18, at 260 bucks, it's technically above, uh, but the ZT562CF is pretty much a natural. It's based on more or less the XM18. You've got 20 CV steel here, three and a half inches, carbon fiber on the front, titanium frame lock on the back, KVT ball bearings. So you've got really nice flipping, deep carry pocket clip, and that signature hinderer uh, over travel disc on the back as well. Really solid knife. The ergonomics are good for a, uh, a not, well, how should I put this? It, it is definitely heavy duty, but it doesn't feel like a tank in the pocket. So it's a really good size for that sort of thing. Um, but if, if 250 is a hard max, I do have a couple options here underneath. One I really like is the Lion Steel SR11 flipper. These come in about 216. For this, you've got uh, a little bit more blade length. Actually, let me check there. Actually, it looks about the same. Uh, we've got 3.7 listed on the website, um, but nice broad drop point blade, sleepner steel, high flat grind, so you're gonna slice pretty well, but it's nice and tough. And talking about the overbuilt quality, you did mention that word. Titanium, or actually uh, this particular one's aluminum, I'm sorry, uh, but there are titanium versions, but over 250 integral construction here. So you don't have multiple pieces pulling together to comprise the handle. You've got a solid billet. So really strong stuff. You've also got not just an over travel disc like the Hinderer. This is actually their, uh, what, oh shoot, what do they call it? The Roto, the Roto block system. I am sorry guys that I'm forgetting. <laughs> I wanted to call it H whale, like their new pocket clip, but you've got their Roto block here on the back. So it, it does act like the over travel arrester, just like on the Hinderer, but you also, when you spin it, it locks the frame lock further into place. So really heavy duty working knife and definitely well within your budget. One more option with a little bit more blade length actually uh, reminds me a little bit of a Hinderer-esque style of design and a bit more affordable too for about 188. This is the Artisan Cutlery Tradition. S35 VN in this case, and almost a full four inches of it. Decent thickness there, not too thin with a high flat grind. Again, solid working profile on the blade, titanium frame lock, no over travel disc, but you get the, uh, the over travel arrester built into the lock face itself with that steel insert there. Milled pocket clip here, which is pretty nice. Frame lock, ball bearings in this case, really nice flipping action, really well put together too. So definitely check these guys out. Maybe that'll get you in the ballpark of what you're looking for. 
All right, next question comes from Steve R. Looking for an EDC food prep knife with the following stats. One hand open and close, four to five inches, plus or minus, it's pretty big, and non serrated. Fortunately for you, we've got a new item in here, which is just about perfect. The Leong Ma Cuff V4. Uh, and these come in uh, for the base G10 versions come in about 338 right now. And you've got a four inch, uh, four and a quarter inch blade here, LMAX steel, high flat grind, kind of a modified sheep's foot profile and almost Santoku-esque in its shape. You've got a nice angle from the orientation of the edge to the way the handle kicks up. So you've got a little bit of clearance on a cutting board if you're doing food prep type things with it. Um, I will say something like this, it's not necessarily the best at like rocking cuts. You can, you can pull it off, don't get me wrong, but with still, even with four inches, it's not a lot to work with for herb mincing, but you could certainly do it with this. Works really well on pull cuts and slices as well. And then it's a great big, EDC utility shape, Cut, cutting through some big boxes, opening packages, you still have enough of a point there to use it very nicely, but you'd be able to trim up some onions real fine with this, do a little herb mincing, certainly cutting meat and that sort of thing. Really nicely uh, considered for the intended job of this knife. Folds up like so, you've got a broad, uh, broad thumb hole here, makes it very easy to open. You can even very easily do that middle finger flick Works really great, nice and smooth, nice and solid feeling as well. The handle also nice and smooth. So again, a little bit easier to keep clean. You've got the frame lock, you've got that nice pocket clip there on the back. Just overall, a really solid option. You've also got carbon fiber and forgot to talk about one key feature, monoblock construction for the back spacer and the uh, the front scale gives you a really solid platform, not quite as solid as a, a full integral like that lion steel, but a little more solid than uh, than some other things. And it looks really clean too. Uh, opposite side you know, of the uh, the cleanliness side though, is if you had an open back to construction, it would be a little bit easier to clean out the inside. So take that uh, into consideration as well. But I think this is probably what you're looking for. All right, next question comes from Given PNW. Uh, better food prep folder between the Spyderco Spidey Chef and the Leong Ma Cuff 3.0. I'm glad you, uh, I'm glad the 4.0s are in because if it was just between the Spidey Chef and the 3.0, I think it's, it's no contest. The 3.0 is nice and it's a nice utility shape, but for food prep, it's getting pretty short. So between those two, hands down, I'd go with the Spidey Chef. Uh, here is my particular Spidey Chef here. You can see I've carried and used it a lot. So rather than compare it to the 3.0, I'm gonna give you a comparison to the 4.0. Um, more affordable on the Spidey Chef when they are in stock, coming in about 235. Uh, so significantly more affordable, but a little bit less uh, blade length to deal with. We're about 3.3 and we've got LC200N, which definitely trumps the LMAX in terms of its stain resistance. Uh, edge holding would probably go to the LMAX, but probably go to the LMAX. Um, but the cutting profile on both is very nice. I will say tip work is probably a little bit easier with the cuff and that's just due to the orientation of the, uh, the angle itself. You've got this modified sheep's foot. Whereas on the Spidey Chef, you've technically got kind of a trailing point Skinner type of shape. The tip is a little higher up. It's a little more difficult to use in comparison between the two. Same deal on the, uh, on the pull cuts works really well. I'd probably give rocking cuts to the advantage to the cuff, both because of the length and the geometry. You've got a lot more travel, a lot more rocking, uh, a lot more variance and angles, I should say, between the front and the back of the rock on the Spidey Chef, but it takes a little, uh, consequently, it's a little bit more to use it, if that makes any sense. Cleanliness though, you've got the same thing in the pivot, no uh, bearings here, but open back in this case is gonna be a little easier to clean and the titanium is gonna be very nice as well for that respect. So hopefully that, uh, that gets you in the ballpark, um, kind of choosing between the two. Both really solid options. So that's kind of my two takes on it as a, uh, as a user of the Spidey Chef, definitely. All right, next question comes from Duncan Idaho. It's a Dune fan here. Uh, definitely have to beware of Chinese brands steel, he says. One no-name copy of a popular design advertising D2 steel was found to not be 
it was some different steel. So what you're saying is there's a company out there that makes its business by copying and stealing other people's designs and they're not being completely honest about the materials they've used. Kill surprise. It's my surprise face. Thomas is wearing his as well. Come on guys, you know, so I mean, what you're going to want to do is stick with, you know, name brand stuff. Don't stick with people who are ripping other people's designs off. And if you want to avoid clones as well as these kind of, you know, unscrupulous copies, stick with a reputable dealer, folks. You know, like there's hardly any way you can verify the authenticity of a thing, whether it's from eBay and even Amazon nowadays. Like stick with folks where you know you're going to be getting a good product, where you know there's customer service to back it up if something is wrong. And I mean, there's, there is ton, there are a ton of Chinese brands out there nowadays that are putting good work out. Politics aside, they're using the right materials, they're using actual D2 because they're actual names on the thing and they're not stealing other people's designs. The stuff we carry here, you can definitely rely on. And I'll tell you this for sure, if we ever find out something we're carrying is not being honest with the materials, we're gonna have them booted out of this building in a heartbeat. No ifs, ands, or buts. So that's my recommendation to you. Don't buy clones and buy from a reputable dealer. Seems to make sense to me. Anyway, next question is from HydraPX. Um, do I need to worry about an OTF opening in my pocket? Um, pretty much no. Uh, when we're talking about a double action OTF, you're dealing with a slider switch. This here is a, a Hogue exploit, for example, um, with a side slider switch. Really nice design and you can see how the switch works there. Essentially for this to fire, you have to move the switch completely. As it rests, the blade is not under spring tension. So it's not just gonna fly out on you. You actually have to push it forward until you get to that point where the resistance builds right there and push past that then in order to fire the blade. If this is just walking around in your pocket, if even if something does happen to catch that, it's not gonna move it very far. And if it does, it's just gonna snap it right back. So pretty much a non-issue with this style of blade. Unless you're trying to wave it. It takes some doing, but. Could you wave an OTF? Don't do that. <laughs> <sighs> There's a reason we don't let Thomas in front of the camera sometimes. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> All right. Next question is from Shamey. Uh, was just wondering if there were some similar knives to the Ontario Rat 1. I've had it in my pocket for a while and was looking for something similar and maybe with a different blade steel. Thanks. Uh, sure. Um, some of the, uh, the ones we like to talk about as kind of competitors to the Rat 1, stuff like the uh, steel, wheel, steel Wheel Cut Jack and even the Spyderco Tenacious Lightweight. But there hasn't been until now what I've kind of thought of as a true like heads up competition to the rat one. But now we've got the new Becker folder, the BK 40. And in my mind, these things go toe to toe, kind of head to head. So I'm going to going to kind of going to go through uh, a quick comparison here between the two. Uh, we'll start with pricing. The BK 40 comes in at uh, $40 right now. The Rat 1 is a little bit cheaper starting at 32, uh, but if you want a uh, upgrade in blade steel, it comes up to around that $40 mark or more in some cases. Uh, but let's talk about the blades there. Similar length, uh, we're about three and a half inches or just over on each of them. Similar profiles, but a bit different. You've got the clip point here on the BK40 with a high flat grind, and you've got a slightly thinner blade stock on the Rat with this drop point and a full flat grind. So in terms of outright slicing efficiency, the rat is going to uh, rat is going to take the cake there a little bit, but then you've got a little bit uh, more rigidity on the blade of the Becker as the uh, the trade off there. Now, as for materials on the blade, uh, you're dealing with Aus 8 on the Becker, so that's a really just it's a solid entry level stainless steel these days. You've got the stainless qualities; it's decently tough as well. You can also get Aus 8 in the base model of the Rat 1, and that is the uh, the less expensive version. If you want a, uh, to trade some of the toughness and the stain resistance of the Aus 8 for more edge retention, there are the D2 steel options coming in closer to that $40 mark. So there's, you don't have that option currently 
on that Becker folder. So, but if, if stainless is, stainlessness is important to you, the D2 is not gonna come into the equation very much. Now, as for the handle, it should be no surprise if you, you know, followed the Becker versus Ontario Rat and SE fixed blade debate over the years, handle comfort always, almost always essentially goes to the Becker and that's still the case here as well. Uh, I'll start with the Rat uh, by, to kind of lay the groundwork, you've got injection molded scales that are just flat. They're fine, they work very well, there's plenty of reach. You've even got, uh, the way they work it out, you've got a section here where you can choke up, get behind the edge, you don't have that in the Becker. And I will say if you've got really big hands, the more rounded nature here at the end of the Ontario handle might be a little nicer as you fall off the back. But for everyone else, the handle contours really make the uh, make the Becker sing in the hand, especially for me anyway, if you move the uh, pocket clip down to the, uh, the tip up position, which while we're talking about pocket clips, you've got a wire clip versus a flat clip on the Ontario, but both of them have four positions. So you can carry it in the same position if you're just upgrading from one to the other, no matter which position you are using on the rat. Both have liner locks too, as you, as you can see. Both of them also have uh, brass uh, or phosphor bronze washers in the pivot as well. So good, uh, a, a good choice for a knife that's gonna be getting out there and getting dirty. But you can see what I'm saying here about the, uh, the tail end of the Becker versus the tail end of the Ontario. If you happen to have hands that are uh, too large for the Becker handle, it's fine when they, uh, they kind of crest over this beak, but you might prefer the Ontario in that case. But for me, I wear a size large or extra large glove depending, so I, that's why I say I have slightly larger than average hands and it fits me just about perfectly, if I'm honest. You've got a little bit of finger guard there at the front, just like on the Ontario. Not so much a space to choke up, but when we're dealing with actual sharpened edge between the two, pretty much about the same there as well. It's, it's a tough choice. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, I am friends with Mr. Becker, but even based off, or even taking that out of the equation, and even though the, uh, the Becker is a little bit more expensive for uh, the comparable stainless models, I personally would go for the Becker because of that feel in the hand. There's just, you know, it's something I say in the uh, the fixed blade versus folder debate a lot is a lot of folders don't always feel like they're designed to be used hard, whereas fixed blades are designed to be used. They're, the handle comfort is very important and that's something that's harder to pull off in a folder just because of the, you know, the way it has to carry in a pocket and the mechanism. So when you get a folder, especially a budget folder that has ergonomics as one of its like pillars of its design philosophy, thumbs up all the way. You gotta love that. So check that guy out. Um, you obviously, if uh, you didn't say whether you were using OS eight or D two, um, on your particular, particular rat, um, if you're looking for some upgrade options, we've covered that in a previous Knife AQ as well. Check that Becker folder out. I really like it. All right, brings us to the lightning round for today. First one is from Dr. Steven Taylor. Uh, hey DCA, hamburgers or hot dogs, pizza or tacos? You know this is a knife channel, right? Um, I guess the important question really is, is a hot dog a sandwich? And is a pizza just an open-faced sandwich? Uh, we're starting that again discuss, talk amongst yourselves. Next question is from Bob Habsolute. Uh, Hi David, since you're on the blade material topic, topic I have a question. Uh, there's a new steel that has yet to be used on production knives, MagnaCut. What production knives, one folder and one fixed blade would you like to see first with that new steel and why? Um, I'm excited about uh, MagnaCut for sure. It's got a really, really compelling uh, combination of features in it. Um, not, you're right, not a lot of production stuff has uh, come out yet because that steel was just released like a month ago. Um, so a lot of the stuff you're gonna see first is gonna come from custom makers. As far as production stuff, I'd love to answer your question, but we're, uh, we got some things in the works already uh, that, we're, that we're trying to make happen. So I'm not gonna be able to talk about it just yet. So this is just a teaser to expect something. It's probably gonna take a while given production timelines, maybe a year or even two, but it's gonna happen, you guys. All right, Tim Westmeyer says, I need some good options for a folder with a big belly. Don't judge my knife kink. No judgment here, my friend. Um, 
Here's a here's a, a nice one that was released, I think, last year. Um, one of my favorite recent big bellied designs, the Kershaw Tumbler by Dmitry Sinkovich. Comes in about 70 bucks. You've got a D2 blade, three and a quarter inch, and it's all belly. You've got that upswept Skinner style of profile there, and really, really fun on some long slices for sure. You've got a, uh, a G10 with carbon fiber overlay for the handle, and you've got their sub frame lock, which you don't see a ton of on, uh, on more affordable knives. Uh, there's also uh, like the Kershaw bare knuckle and the Kershaw Natrix, of course, which is actually, I take it back. The Kershaw Natrix is definitely more affordable than this, um, but it doesn't have this kind of belly at all. But I really like the execution here. It's a really nice shape for the lock bar. It's not just kind of slapped on. It's considered as part of the design. Deep carry pocket clip as well. KVT ball bearings in the pivot. Folds together really nicely and then flips out really nicely too. All right, this next question is one Thomas is really going to love because he's going to have to film this blade. Um, Matthew H says, what kind of mirror polished blades are out there? You're welcome. <laughs> I have a lot of stonewash blades but not a single mirror polished blade. And I think they look good. Any budget friendly mirror polished out there? Yes. Um, when we're talking uh, on the budget side of things, I don't really know of any uh, folders that come to mind, but cases fixed blades, they're stacked leather handled fixed blades still made in America. This is their six inch Hunter and uh, pardon a little dust there on the edge comes in about 75 bucks. Um, the edge itself could use a little bit of refinement. That's why there's some, uh, some gubbins on there if you are seeing that, but you've got that nice, highly finished blade. Let's see if we can get Thomas in the, in the reflection. Maybe. No, it's a hollow grind. <laughs> that'll, that'll affect things, but they are really nicely put together. Kind of edge finishing aside, you've got that classic kind of American, uh, a classic American hunting blade shape comfortable stacked leather handles. One of the advantages of that style of handle is pretty much no hot spots all around. And there's a nice kind of oval ovular shape to this one as well. Uh, I do have, you know, I mentioned my hand size. It's a little tight for me. I will grant you. Um, but there are some other blade shapes at, uh, at e some even more affordable prices on these guys as well. And they come with a nice leather sheath too. All right. Next question comes from Pat Eagle. What's a good fixed blade with a Kydex sheath for EDC and a seven inch blade for under 50 bucks. That's a lot, especially if you want actual real Kydex, that's, um, kind of expensive to do. So it may not happen the way you think, but I got you something that, uh, that'll work. Cold steels GI Tanto comes in 24 bucks. You've got a carbon steel blade in this 1055. So nothing spectacular, nothing special, but very tough. And it's certainly a toughness oriented blade, synthetic, uh, injection molded handles here, no Kydex, but you have similar style of retention with cold steels. Secure X and it'll of course fit aftermarket belt attachments. If you don't like what comes with it, that's pretty much what you're going to find in that size with a Kydex style sheath for under that price. Um, me personally, this doesn't strike me as a very EDC friendly shape. I'd probably go uh, with the standard SRK. It has a six inch blade. This is the more uh, expensive version because we didn't have the uh, carbon steel one uh, today when we were filming, but little bit more EDC friendly and the same style of sheath. All right, which brings us to our last question, our most serious question of the episode. Gideon Stuff asks, what pocket knife would Crocodile Dundee carry? In addition to his buoy, of course. Um, I think there's only one legit answer and that's the fancier versions of the Espada XL from Cold Steel. Comes in about 350 but it's magnificent. And I mean that hit the, uh, the classic crocodile Dundee buoy was, uh, it was Australian gunsmith, John Bowring. If I, if my notes here are correct, it, uh, had some really good, uh, good aesthetics to it. So the folder obviously has got to match the, uh, the attitude and the aesthetics of that. And if there's any knife that deserves to be, to have that phrase said about it, when you pull it out of your pocket, pull the Espada XL out, grab the, uh, the ambidextrous thumb plate on the hem of your pocket. So as you pull it out, swings the blade open, then you can go. Now that's a knife. And now I've done that on video. Yep. I've said the phrase. I never wanted to say it, but it's okay because it's worth it for a knife like this. That is indeed a knife. <laughs> that is a knife. Absolutely. There you go. S 35 VN seven and a half inch blade, triad lock G 10 and aluminum bolsters. 
Very nice. Very nice. Well, that is all I've got time for today. Thanks everyone for your questions. Keep leaving them down below in the comments. We, uh, we need your questions to keep this series going. If you want to get your hands on any of these knives, we'll leave links in the description as always to take you over to knifecenter.com and sign up for our knife rewards program so that you're going to earn some free money to spend on your next knife when you buy one of these knives today. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center signing off. See you next time.